Let me, uh, here we go. What's happening? What in the world? I'm good. How are you? Good. Too. Let me close this. There we go. Yeah. So, ah. So, yeah, this just real quick, like 30 minutes, just like a makeshift video podcast type thing. Just I'm just checking on my favorite people, making sure they're cool, and we talk about whatever we talk about. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, thanks for including me. I appreciate it. This is dope. Um, yeah, it's it's just nice to connect with friends, community, whoever, everybody right, right. now. Um, and it, it's also nice to enjoy the peace and enjoy True. the stillness, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm trying. So real quick, um, just to stay on task, I got like a couple questions, uh, just a couple, like maybe eight or something. Um, real quick, just give us a little bit, talk about a little bit about you. You don't have to be too long-winded, like, you know, what you're known for, what you do, stuff like that. Sure, sure. So um, I've been working in arts and culture in Cleveland for um, quite a while. I love it. Um, grew up very much uh, attached to and, and enjoying going to everywhere uh, from Caramu and music settlements, um, you know, going to hear the orchestra and um, all types of performances, going to see Christmas lights in Neela View Park in East Cleveland, you know, just I grew yeah. up with a lot of access and love for and appreciation for the arts, left Cleveland for many years, for college, for grad school, uh, and just to experience life outside of Cleveland, um, and moved back here with uh, a background in marketing and uh, an opportunity to work for the Cleveland Orchestra. I worked there for a few years in marketing and uh, with, a, with a background as a violinist, you know, I played um, under the, the, I was a student of a, a violinist in the Cleveland Orchestra. And so to come back to Cleveland and work there uh, was pretty dope. Um, and also challenging um, because you, you feel and you see um, the beauty of this music, but you also feel and you see the absence of, of, of people who don't find the relevance in it and or don't feel welcome in, in the spaces, so particularly black and brown people. So um, I was working there, there were shifts. Um, I learned a lot, uh, moved on, um, ended up working for Cozy, a uh, small business uh, resource organization uh, in marketing. Um, ended up getting laid off there, uh, which was okay. You know, it was scary, yeah. but it was okay because I was ready for this transition and I didn't know what. And, and one thing I started doing in my spare time with Cozy was um, I started a, a uh, film program that was called Sister Cinema. And we showed films uh, by and about queer women of color of every diaspora. And, and we would show the films at various art galleries and spaces and follow it up with discussions. And so we were, you know, partnering with all types of organizations and, and hosting, you know, film programs eventually at venues like Mocha Cleveland. Um, so when I got laid off from Cozy, I sent out my, this email. Uh, it was one of the most vulnerable things I ever did. I sent out this email to all these wonderful contacts that I made in, in all these various spaces I worked in and networked in. And I was like, here's my resume. Um, I really love what I was doing with Sister Cinema, creating uh, programs and experiences for communities and um, creating spaces where people can connect with one another. Um, I also have this marketing background. I love the arts. Sent this email with my new resume to like 200 some people. And I, didn't, I was like, let me know if you can help. And at the time, Mocha was able to help. Uh, I'd, I'd done a couple Sister Cinema film screenings there. Um, and they were like, hey, we got this job. It's called Curator of Public Programs, and you should apply. And I didn't know what that meant. Turned out it meant you can create programs and experiences for various communities uh, inspired by the art. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I ended up doing that, worked there for several years, learned a lot, had some amazing experiences. And, and um, today I work at Cleveland Museum of Art. Um, I began working there almost three years ago as their uh, director of community programs. And so there, uh, I organize mix. Um, right, on a monthly right, basis. right. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's jump right into it. Okay. <laughs> let's tell them what the mix is. The mix is just talk about it. Love it. Everybody yeah. Goes. So mix started back in 2012 
Um, and it is an event that is art inspired and it's for all audiences over the age of 18. And um, the event, it, it basically transforms the museum's atrium into a, a community space, a gathering space, uh, a party space, a welcoming space. Um, every month, Mix is inspired by a different theme. Uh, and the theme derives uh, its inspiration from an exhibition or something on view. And so the music, the creative spaces and art experiences, the uh, gallery tours, the talks, um, it's all driven by this theme. And we try to be inclusive and it's a very fun space because we get to be very experimental in an art museum. We get to work with, um, I love inviting various artists and creative people and thinkers in, uh, in our community to participate in the programming and, and dancers, I mean, everything, poets. I mean, we've just been blessed and, and it's been so wonderful to collaborate with um, so many talented people in Cleveland. And I think there's you know a lot of potential for us to continue to do that. But um, one of the things I'm most proud of at this event is how diverse it is. Um, you see people of all walks of life um, people in their 20s, people in their 40s, 50s, um, all economic, all backgrounds, uh, you know, it's just a, an eclectic audience of people who love the museum and love being around in this energetic space. So it's really awesome. fun. Love it, love it, love it. So I haven't been on site at the museum since Friday the 13th of March. Mm. Um, that was our last day open to the public and the last day that our staff was able to work on site. So um, a number of us are working from our homes and um, a number of us um, are unfortunately furloughed at the moment. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge that as well. Um, you know, while we're closed, those who are part-time are, are not able to work, but um, you know, there are assistance programs and we're, we're thinking of them and you know, we hope to get back to normal as soon as possible so that we can all work together again. Um, but those of us who are continuing to work full time, um, like myself, we're, it's, it's a exciting and challenging time because we really have to reimagine and rethink what our, our programs are really about and, and what, how do you re, imagine these experiences in a, in a virtual space. You know, how do we continue to engage all those same audiences that we've done everything from gallery talks to lectures to people who come into our galleries just to view whatever is on view? Um, how do we rethink all, you know, what a mixed experience might look like? How do we rethink um, our programs and experiences for children and families, for teachers and educators, um, for those who love the performing arts? I mean, uh, the museum is, uh, um, I'd say, one of many hubs in our city for, for culture. And, um, you know, we've had to greatly reduce, take a step back, put everything on pause, and then try to be thoughtful in, in redeveloping and rethinking these things. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to be able to be part of that work. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I say it's exciting because it's like, oh, we get to we get to create new stuff. Like we can right, create right. videos, we can, there's a lot of different great ideas, but like what makes the most sense and what do, does our audience need? What do people want? And so I'm trying to get a pulse actually right now, people mm -hmm. um, to say like, hey, wh what do you need? So I'll put this out there to you as well, Jamal, and, right. and everyone who, who follows you and loves your work and who's listening to this recording, um, you know, what what do you need and want from the Cleveland Museum of Art or from our arts community um, right now? Uh, you know, we don't know when things will get back to normal. Right. So uh, I don't think I don't think <clears throat> I don't think it's ever going to get back to normal. But I like what you were saying about you know being excited about rethinking this and redoing it and pivoting from there. So you know, I think everybody's kind of doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Any other challenges? I mean, I've, <clears throat> can you talk about some challenges you had up until that point of, you know, did you have any challenges with, with the mix at all? Um, mm -hmm. you, um, um, it seemed like the momentum was like at the, at the, at the top of the peak though. So was it oh, any yeah, challenges just trying to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it, it definitely, I'm not gonna lie. It, it took a while to get there. Um, when I first, you know, started working at the museum almost three years ago, to be three years in July, 
you know, I inherited this program, this event that had a great reputation. So I'm a little nervous about taking right. it, taking it on. It feels like a beast, you know. I'm like, oh my goodness. So um, we've been able to develop themes that people like, you know, and we kind of tried to learn. We've definitely made mistakes, you know, like what themes don't work um, and and what does work, and and how do we reach out to new audiences and who do we collaborate with, you know. Um, I think who we invite to DJ, who we invite to perform, present, whatever at Mix really makes a big difference in who attends. Because there's so many, you know, great artists in our community who have their own following. And I think that's, you know, our responsibility to create with that community, to invite that energy, to reignite and, and welcome more people who can, you know, because. I think we all find some some bit of inspiration from from art and definitely from music and you know all types of art forms. So how can we create uh, a space where all of that comes together? So um, it's definitely was a, a matter of trial and error and, and trying some things that worked, trying some things that didn't work, and um, now we're we're kind of fine tuning that and and trying to do that for a digital space. Um, and and be thoughtful about it, but also have fun with it. So, cool. Cool. <clears throat> let me ask you this: like, we sat and had a couple meetings and stuff before. So, I've seen your iPad, I've seen your organization. Can you talk about? <clears throat> and I know a little bit about you. You know, outdoorsy, um, ride your bike and stuff like that. Can you talk a little bit about like your process and how you organize your? You know, just basically keep organized and keep all this stuff like on track and. Like your sure. <laughs> well, I would like to say I have a perfect system and I got it down to a science and <laughs> there's a perfect <laughs> formula, but there's really not. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an art historian. I'm not uh, by trade an art educator. Uh, my, my, my background is, is uh, marketing and I, I'm a lover of music. I'm a former violinist. So um, I, I do my research by thinking about the exhibitions and what's on view as much as possible. Thankfully, I have, you know, people I work with who are experts. And so I have a lot of conversations with people on staff to find out what's going on and what might be an interesting theme that we could connect folks with and create really dope experiences um, with. So I learn what I can inside the museum about stuff. Yeah. And then I also keep a pulse on what's happening in the world. And especially in Cleveland, um, I, I love, you know, the, we have amazing literary scene, all these great um, writers and poets and thinkers. Um, we have a great, you know, uh, visual artists throughout our region. Um, so many great thinkers at our colleges and universities and in our various communities. So um, I, I keep a pulse of what's going on. And I also mm -hmm. think about what's happening outside of the museum, outside of Cleveland. And I draw inspiration from just life and what's going on in our headlines and um, try to, um, get ideas from a variety of people uh, in terms of the creative process. Um, I, right now, I, in terms of thinking about the themes we do for Mix, um, I get inspiration internally, but what I'd like to do more of, and I think is important, is asking our communities what they want um, and creating more with um, people outside the museum um, mm -hmm. because we, we want to reflect the voices of us of Greater Cleveland. And, and I think in crafting an event, we have to, we have to listen uh, and do what people want to. So, um, you know, I, I want to do more of that in the future. And I think that's important. And that's some, like something I'm actually working on more of now and thinking about community engagement, you know, mm -hmm. um, how do we create uh, experiences with our communities instead of just for them. Um, and so, but I, I use different tools, you know. Yeah. Uh, I use I use like a, 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 a an app called OneNote, um, mm -hmm. and it it has all these. It's a great way to organize uh, ideas and to dos, and it has like it's like a virtual notebook um, through Microsoft. Um, mm -hmm. And now that we're working in this virtual realm and everyone's working from home, we're using something called Microsoft Teams, which you know. Is great. It's kind of like uh, there's the chat function. There's a calendar. It's connected to Outlook. It's connected to you know. What's it called? Uh, it's called Teams. Like mm. Teams, yeah. Oh. And um, it's kind of like Slack, 
and you can create all these groups and it's actually been better for collaboration. There are a lot of departments within the museum and when you create events for big events with 2000 plus people, you got to work with a lot of departments. And so it's been really great for communication actually uh, using Microsoft Teams. It has video chat and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. I know, <clears throat> I know you talked about um, <clears throat> the online library and how it, and extensive that was. Um, are you guys doing any extra programming now more virtual than ever before? So absolutely. So let me talk a little bit about that online library library because I think um, that's something that people don't aren't necessarily aware of. Uh, anyone can experience the, the museum's entire collection uh, digitally and and we are actually a pretty unique museum in that we have a digital innovation team. Uh, because um, all, our entire collection can be accessed digitally. Uh, so um, to access it, you can go to clevelandart.org slash art slash collection. And um, you, via that, that route, uh, you'll get to collections online. You can view everything that's currently on, in the galleries at this moment. Um, or you can research specific types of art. You can look up African-American art, art by women, art by um, artists from Cleveland uh, that are in collection. Wow. So you can uh, do that, any type of research, um, and you can look at what's in our archives. So there's you know, gems in our archives and this is, aren't necessarily on view right now, but you can check those out and read the labels. And within Collections Online, there's something really dope called open access. If you click that filter, anything that's open access, anyone can use the high resolution images permission free for whatever purposes you would mm -hmm. like. That's Commercial cool. purposes, create videos. So I, I actually want to see more of us, all of us create with, whether it's creating videos, creating movies, creating uh, mini documentaries, creating, you know, animating, mixing up you know, that's actually what I'd love to see you do. Uh, <laughs> them all. Uh, I love watching. I love watching your Adobe uh, Photoshop speed art, and you always add a soundtrack. So, right, right. <laughs> I would love, I to, to. for example, to create uh, a video that could show people how they can reimagine stuff that's in our collection, and it's yeah. like something you can do. So, yeah. uh, and then there's something called uh, Art Lens. Get that app and. Um, you can create your own virtual tour of objects, including the labels, and then share the tour with your friends. So like, I create a tour of all the African-American art currently on view. Uh, I create another tour called Cats, Cats, Cats. And it's just all the cats I could find from the Egyptian gallery to wherever. And so it's like, you can make funny tours and using art lens, so that's pretty cool. So why is it so important for the community to get this culture? Like. <clears throat> Um, just visiting different museums, going outside, riding their bikes, it's like, why is this important? Why is this vital for us to do? I mean, a lot of us go to the art museum as kids, and then after that, we don't go anymore. So. Um, I think the museum can be a place where you connect with history and the history of different cultures. Um, if you, you know, if you care to dig deeper, um, it's also a space that's just peaceful and beautiful. Um, so just, you know, the Cleveland Museum of Art, we are, we are incredibly, you know, fortunate to have, I think, one of the most beautiful museums and it's free. Anyone can go. You can just walk there, take the bus, ride your bike, whatever, uh, and go and it's free. And, and you can explore, um, you know, the history of art of mankind. Um, you know, we have a very, you know, a great collection. Um, so, just taking in that beauty uh, is, is wonderful. Um, it's, it's also a place where you can learn about other cultures and just, I, I, I don't know. I think just yeah. that's, that's, that's for me an important part. Um, and I love learning about different parts of the world. Um, you know, you can experience, you know, Asia and the continent of Africa and, um, you know, it's so much more contemporary art. It's, you know, another space in a museum that's really growing. Um, I think our contemporary uh, curators are really fantastic. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's just a great space and, mm -hmm. and it's free. So um, it's a place, and then that's just indoors. There's also the outdoor part of the museum, the campus. Uh, 
the fine arts garden. Um, there's a, a horoscope. Uh, you can, there's these sculptures in the fine arts garden of all the various horoscopes. And, you know, even during this COVID season, you can't go inside, but you can just walk among the, you know, along the garden and, and check out sculptures and hang out by the lagoon, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So I ain't know about I ain't know about the violin part. So you still playing? I mean, we need to see that. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, yeah, I I uh, I played the violin and starting in grade school. Mm. I went to Cleveland Heights um, Public Schools, and um, from like fourth grade, and I played in the orchestras at a music settlement. Um, you know, that was like my one of my extracurricular things. Right. And um, I went to college on a violin scholarship. Right. Uh, went to Miami of Ohio. Um, I thought I wanted to be a professional violinist, play in the orchestra. Why'd you change? Um, Why'd you but change? Uh, I, I just, you know, I would do things like practice six to eight hours a day. And I was like, I really want to work behind the scenes. And I, I kind of had this, I kind of thought I wanted to go into business mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship. Uh, and I was like, I can still do the art. Thing and the music thing in my spare time. And so uh, that was like how I got connected to the arts. But I occasionally play, uh, <laughs> not often. Um, really? I, 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 I played in a, a band for a hot minute called <laughs> Seely. We were called Seely's Curse, inspired by the color purple, you know. Oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> and we would play covers. We would play covers. Oh, that's uh, dope. That's Adriana, dope. Triana, some nirvana we would you know different stuff and i could just play by ear i, I could oh, just like word. listen to something so i i definitely like during this covid season it would be dope i'd love to like get some loop pedals and start experimenting i just please, haven't please. had the time but um yeah i love <laughs> experimenting with music too i mean I, I would play more beethoven and string quartets and orchestral stuff but like hmm. i grew up as part of hip-hop generation so i'm like right, i right. want to experiment with like you know, we've, we've heard it all, Wu-Tang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mixing strings and hip-hop and other other genres of music is not new. So I, I'm inspired by a lot of folks. Uno Lady, a shout out to Uno Lady. She said she would, uh, and Afi Scruggs, they both said they would give me some lessons on how to use some of this, uh, these loop, loop pedal technology in my mm. set. But uh, for now, I'm just focused on community building work. I, I, right, I, got right. it. <clears throat> I appreciate it. Um, any any last words of advice or any wisdom coming from you um, before huh. you close out anything? Um, I think right now I'm just trying to stay as, as positive as I can. Um, definitely my heart goes out to all of us who are under unemployed and or unemployed right now, uh, you know, who are in that situation before COVID and right. it's, you know, even, you know, more challenging now. So, uh, I'm, you know, I think it's important for us all to be there for one another and um, check in on on one another. Uh, I, I appreciate you reaching out to me. It's wonderful to see you. Um, and um, yeah, and I think use this time to be introspective. And and you know, I'm trying to use this time just to reconnect with myself and yes. get to know myself better. Right. Um, and uh, just keep creating and healing and loving one another. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate it.